Hey, it's John Mike, BrewDashDudes.com, and we have beer in front of us as per usual, as they say in my neighborhood. And uh, this beer is one of the Harvest Ales. And I say one of the Harvest Ales of 2018 because I have a good number of hop varieties that I grew in my backyard that usually what I would do is just take them all and put them into one beer. But uh, this year I have the keen idea and also I have a lot of hops to brew with to brew smash beers with them. So this is kind of a smash slash Harvest Ale tasting video. We're not going to call it a smash beer video because you can't get these hops in your local homebrew shop. These only are for a limited time Yes, from my backyard. So the first variety that we're drinking tonight, and I'll probably sprinkle in a few more as I get time to brew. This is Chinook. Chinook grew in my backyard. This is probably a three year old plant. Um, did very well this year, lots of cones. I got 10 ounces of cones, uh, hop cones off of it, and just used crisp Matters Otter malt, um, and that's it, 10 pounds of for a five gallon batch. And then of the 10 ounces, uh, two ounces of um, Chinook went in at the very, very beginning of the boil and then four ounces went at 10 minutes ago and then another four ounces at the end of the boil a did dried a, whole hops yes dried whole hops that's the other thing they weren't um they were not wet they were dried on a uh, screen in my basement over the course of three days i froze them for a couple of days because it co didn't exactly coincide with my brew, brew day, day yeah. but uh, right after that they went right into the brew kettle, and this is what we produced. Mm. So, Mike, you've had a few tastes. I mean, we've had tastes of this before. Yeah. And um, I don't know if it's um, if it's any uh, different from what you had even last weekend. But uh, the other thing about this beer, I will tell you that I did use just some just dry English yeast, say fail 04, and uh, oh. fer fermented very quickly, meaning... Um, I fermented, it was done in three days, by day eight it was in the keg. How long has it been in the keg? Um, a couple, couple weeks now, yeah. Really? Yeah, why? Does it taste, oh, just talk to me about it, what do you think well, okay. about it? Okay, yeah. the aroma is, uh, tremendous. I thought this was something other than the Chinooks. Really? Actually. Ah, I, I fooled you. Um, first, the visual presentation of this beer, I mean, the foam is nice when we poured it. The haziness and the orange hue, I mean, you, you this passes uh, eight, uh, two weeks in the keg, and it's got this much haze, and you used an English ale yeast. Um, this could pass off, like, right off the bat as a New England IPA, pale ale, whatever. I mean, it's it's holding haze, which is yeah. fascinating, and I'm, um, I got to think about the chemistry of what's making these beers hazy in a different way because this is this is interesting for just one hop grown in your backyard in one malt yeah but it's it's like eight ounces towards the end of the I know <laughs> I know it's tremendous um, but the aroma there's actually a really nice floral and fruity aroma hmm. it's not I wouldn't say it's distinctively any given fruit but it is not hmm. citrus it's yeah. it's in that fleshy berry type of a really fruity thing and hmm. there's a little bit of Maybe it's a little bit of orange in it, hmm. but uh, and the flavor is the same. It follows through with like a fruity sweetness. Hmm. The bitterness is subdued. There's a little bit of like, you know, I remember now. I'm remembering drinking this before too. Is that the more I drink it, the more I get a little bit more of like a resinous quality yes. to it. But there is a fruity. Maybe it's the yeast, but there's a fruity ester like. Thing going on there, which I I I can only attribute to the whopping amount of hops because the bitterness isn't isn't there, but you've got a tremendous amount of late hop. Yep. Um, so it's very floral. There's there's a very pleasant fruit-like hop presence. I mean, you could give this to someone as a New England pale ale, and they would they would believe that that's what it was. Mm. I think. I mean, it's like a it's like a muted mosaic galaxy. Really? It's, yeah, I think so. It's, mm. There's a fruity quality to it. Mm. 
I, yeah, I guess. I think it's the. I think maybe I'm more used to it. I get a lot of resin, and I think that when I gave it to you, I don't know, over the past two weeks, uh, you were looking for more of a pine note. Yeah. From our friends. But that's why I think Chinook. it's. I think it's drifted away from that a little bit. Really. I mm. think it's getting sweeter. I think it's getting more fruity. Mm. Um, and to say resiny, I mean, I get it. There's a little bit in the back of the mouth, but it's, but it's by no definition resiny, like no. what traditional resiny beer or hops would be, right? I mean, I think you, on my palate, I got to really pick that out. Hmm. To me, there's a nice malt sweetness and there's a hop floral sweetness there yeah. that's nice. Yeah, I mean, I chose English yeast so it would be fruitier because I knew from brewing with this hop that I grew in my backyard yeah. last year. But a straight up SO4 in, in Maris Otter, you know, SO4 doesn't always really drive a whole, I mean, even though it's an English yeast, especially pitched from dry, hmm. sometimes it's not really all that expressive, but yep. um, it's fascinating. I love it. Yeah. So I, Super I, drinkable. So I, I, I brewed a five gallon batch, but I knew with all the hop cones that I was going to use that I wasn't going to get a lot of yield. A lot of those cones suck up and hold on to that wort. Yeah. And uh, um, I did procure a few uh, smaller fermentation vessels, like one of four gallons. Yeah. So I filled it as much as I could and then just stopped it because it's a it's a uh, constant struggle with my auto siphon yeah. to get it out of the kettle, um, uh, knock away hop debris. <laughs> and whole cones that get caught at the very end of it and then restart the siphon. Thankfully, yeah. at that point of the brewing process, it's great to add more air and oxygen to it. So all this uh, yeah. auto siphoning is okay. I don't really mind shaking it up and all that. So that's really it. I mean, the only other thing is I rushed that fermentation. I had that party that, come, that came up oh, yeah, yeah. and uh, I really just want to get it in the keg, force it very quickly, probably was all carved up in two days. I mean, I was just sort of shaking it the whole time. Maybe that, I mean, I don't know. But things have settled down since then. Um, all right, well, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you like this. Yeah, it's stupendous. Uh, it's all right. I mean, I think it's, uh, it's not exactly, like you read the descriptors that you get uh, from the homebrew store about the hops that are commercially produced. When you grow in your backyard, you never know what you're going to get, gonna but get. that's part of the fun. So It changes a little bit based on the how well the growing season goes. Exactly. So I think it's good just to, to have, you know, just to say, hey, I, I grew these hops in my backyard and I made a hoppy beer with it. Yeah. In years past, I made beers with homegrown hops, but there wasn't enough to really push through that flavor. Yeah. And uh, with almost a pound of hops in this, ta-da, done and done. So. It's great. It's tremendous. There you go. All right. Well, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Uh, if you have not started to grow your own hops in your backyard, what's stopping you? Find find a patch, and hopefully you live in a nice temperate zone, which I get, you know that's a that's a part of it. But uh, if you do, I always think it's good to have it. They grow nice. You can grow them on fences. You can grow them up the side of your house, sheds, you know, poles, yeah. whatevs. Just grow them, and then you have hops to brew with during the. Uh, autumn season. So, for John and Mike, brew-dudes.com, brew on. Cheers!